Imagine it's Monday morning and you're getting ready for the week ahead. But you awaken to feelings of profound fatigue, as though you never slept, and your mind is not clear or crisp, and you wonder how you will get it all done. You leave the house and you start the drive, but you're not headed to work or school. Instead, you check into the local dialysis center, where you spend the next four hours hooked to a machine with a series of filters designed to clear your blood of the very toxins that cause that fatigue and that mental fuzziness. On your way out, as you say goodbye to the staff, they respond, see you in two days. And that's what life with kidney failure is like. Just to live, you have to come back every two days and repeat the process over and over again. To make your situation seem even more impossible, you learn that 10 out of every 100 kidney failure patients will die on dialysis each year. Even worse, the only cure, kidney transplantation, it has a supply and demand problem. More than 100,000 people are in need of a kidney transplant, but fewer than 11,000 deceased donor kidney transplants are performed each year. From the shadows, however, emerge family, friends, even strangers. They've heard your story and your plight, and they are ready and willing to give you the gift of life. They've learned about living kidney donation and that most people can live a healthy, normal life with just one kidney. In fact, they're ready and willing to give you their kidney. Living donor kidney transplantation will cure your kidney failure and eliminate your need for dialysis. One by one, doctors begin testing their blood to make sure they're a match for you. One by one, however, they are eliminated from donating to you because of blood group and tissue incompatibilities. There are no matches, and you are left to wait for a deceased donor kidney to become available. The wait, you ask? How long? Eight to 10 years. And you remember, 10% of kidney failure patients will die each year waiting. You feel so alone, wondering if you too will die while waiting. You're not alone. Many individuals in need of a kidney transplant have a willing but incompatible living kidney donor. In fact, almost half of people who volunteer to be a living kidney donor will not match their intended recipient. This is because of differences in blood groups and tissue types. You wonder, is there a solution? There is a solution. In fact, it's what I do. I'm part transplant surgeon and part matchmaker, if you will. I take living donor and recipient pairs that don't match because of age differences, size differences, or differences in blood types and tissue types, and I facilitate kidney exchanges. So, instead of receiving a kidney from your original donor, you receive a kidney from a total stranger. And in return, your original donor gives to someone else in need. While it may seem complicated, we actually borrowed a page out of the airline industry's playbook. In fact, our optimized computerized algorithms designed to identify the most number of potential matches and therefore transplants are actually based on the same applied mathematics algorithms that airline industries use to keep airplanes from crashing into each other during flight. You see, unlike the human brain, these optimized computerized algorithms can process all possible matches and choose the combinations that will result in the greatest number of transplants. To participate, a recipient simply needs someone, a spouse, a parent, a friend, willing to donate a kidney to a total stranger on their behalf. These individuals may begin as complete strangers, but with the help of a loved one willing to donate in honor of them, they can change each other's lives. Come with me 
to a hospital ward filled with patients in need of transplants and their living kidney donors desperate to help them. We're making surgery rounds. We're walking room to room, checking on the patients, answering questions, and making sure they're ready for surgery. We knock on the first door and we enter to find Caitlin, a rising high school senior in black belt and karate, who suddenly fell seriously ill and had few options. Caitlin joined the ranks of the more than 100,000 Americans in desperate need of a kidney transplant. At Caitlin's side is her dad, Earl, who's ready and willing to give her the gift of life. Earl, indeed, is both a blood group and tissue match for his daughter, Caitlin, but is 25 years her senior. And Earl knows that by participating in the exchange, Caitlin stands to benefit by receiving a kidney from a much younger stranger. And just a few doors down, we enter to find Pastor Derek. Pastor Derek has been waiting some time to donate his kidney in honor of his friend Michael, with whom he was not a tissue match. You see, Michael already received his kidney transplant as a part of a different leg of the chain. Pastor Derek is simply paying the gift forward by donating in honor of Michael and in so doing is keeping the chain alive and passing the gift of altruism on to the next person in need. And just next door, although neither of them knows it, is Allison, a wife and mother of three who will be receiving the pastor's gift of life. This young mom is receiving Pastor Derek's kidney because her cousin Courtney, with whom she was not a blood type match, came forward and volunteered to donate a kidney on her behalf. And although none of them realizes it, cousin Courtney's kidney is destined to provide high schooler Caitlin a fresh new start on life. In fact, a 20-year younger kidney than her dad Earl could have given her. And in Caitlin's honor, Earl will donate his kidney, setting off the next series of exchanges. And just like that, a string of strangers changed each other's lives simply by changing the conversation from donating directly to their loved one to donating in honor of their loved one. Although they all began as strangers, the relief and gratitude are palpable. And you can see etched into each of their faces the realization that they have each become a part of something bigger than themselves. In one day, multiple lives were changed. Two transplants were made a reality. And no one was left to wait for a deceased donor kidney to become available. So simple, yet so profound. Donor exchanges like this one have the potential to revolutionize how we match those in need with potential donors and could double the number of live donor transplants performed in this country each year, from 6,000 to 12,000. That's 6,000 more live donor kidney transplants. That's 6,000 fewer people waiting for a deceased donor kidney to become available. It's also 6,000 more deceased donor kidneys now available for those who can't identify a living kidney donor. It's a win-win, yet we have never realized the full potential of living donor exchanges in this country. Why, might you ask? Well, what's missing is one centralized, selfless system in which every living donor and recipient pair participates and joins a movement, a crusade to save lives. Simply put, we must change the conversation. We must move from an opt-in system in which living donor and recipient pairs only participate when absolutely necessary, when their blood groups and tissue types don't match, to an opt-out system in which we assume altruism, in which every living donor and recipient pair participates regardless of compatibility. Yes, 
It begins by believing the best in our fellow man. It begins with the assumption of altruism and igniting a movement to eliminate incompatibilities as barriers to live donor kidney transplantation. It begins by changing the conversation from donating directly to your loved one to donating in honor of your loved one. Join me. Help me change the conversation. Help me advocate for and create a single national living kidney donor exchange. Thank you.